In a previous video, I introduced Gradle, which is an automated build system that can automatically compile and test our Java projects and can fetch dependencies, libraries, from the internet if we declare that our project depends upon them. In this video, I'm going to show how it can also compile and run web applications for us. So in the introductory video for the course, I explained how web engineering teams typically like to automate as much as possible of the build process so that they can have a continuous integration server that every time someone checks in a change to the source code, the continuous integration server checks out the code and automatically compiles it, runs all the tests, sees if they've broken anything or whether that change is potentially deployable. Well, Gradle is a build system that that continuous integration server could use to build the code. So um, if the continuous integration server checks out the code, well, it can run Gradle test and run all the tests on the system. So lots and lots of web engineering teams use something like Gradle uh, as part of their build process. This time, rather than build the project from scratch, I'm going to show you a little one that I made earlier. So where before we had proj, this time we have web proj. But if we do an ls, sure enough, there is a build.gradle file and there is a source directory. Let's have a look in build.gradle first. So we're still applying the Java plugin because we're still compiling Java code. But now we have a couple of other plugins being applied. We have the WAR plugin, the, uh, and this plugin knows how to produce a web archive, which is a jar file containing the classes for our servlets and also containing a web inf directory containing web.xml that has metadata about our web application, uh, for instance, configuring what URLs all the different servlets should live on. The third one that we've got here is apply from, and we've got this GitHub uh, URL. So this is downloading a plugin from GitHub and applying it. If you look in the Gradle documentation online, you'll see that Gradle has a Jetty plugin. Uh, but that Jetty plugin is for an old version of Jetty. It's for Jetty 6, which uh, is um, for a previous version of the servlet specification and might be confusing. Uh, so this plugin from GitHub is being included so that we can run our uh, web application in Jetty 9, which is for servlet specification 3.1. When you run a Gradle test or Gradle uh, app run, uh, which is the target that we'll see in a moment, uh, you'll probably find that it will download quite a lot of dependencies for that script. So again, we have to declare the repositories that we're going to be looking for our library artifacts in. And again, we're just using Maven Central. Uh, but in the dependencies section, now we have a second dependency. We've still got the dependency on JUnit, but we've now got this provided compile Java X, Java EE Web API version 7. The provided compile is a different sort of dependency. What this one means is that Gradle's going to need this when it compiles the code, but it's going to be provided at runtime. So it means that Gradle, when it does its compile stage, it should make sure that it has that jar file on the compile class path because it's going to need it to compile other code. It will be calling methods and classes that are in uh, that jar file. Um, but when we run it on Jetty, uh, we shouldn't include that jar file with our project because Jetty already has it. Uh, because, for instance, in that particular jar file is the servlet API. Uh, group Java X named Java EE Web API. This is a jar file that contains everything in the Java Enterprise Edition web profile. Um, which is a particular package of uh, many different uh, Java Enterprise Edition uh, classes, um, including the servlet specification. And it's version 7.0 because the servlet specification 3.1 is part of Java Enterprise Edition version 7.0. So if we now go and have a look at the source code in our uh, project this time, We'll go into source main and we'll see that we have Java and we also now have web app. Web app, if we go into that, 
there is webinf, this directory that's going to contain the metadata. And sure enough, if we go inside webinf and we have a look, there is web.xml. Let's have a look at web.xml. So here I've declared a web app and it has all of the namespace declarations at the top that are typical for uh, web applications for servlet specification version 3.1. Uh, but you'll also see I've declared metadata complete is false. And so this is this attribute that says this web.xml, it doesn't contain the complete metadata for this uh, web application. So the container, Tomcat or Jetty should scan the classes for annotations, such as annotations declaring servlets and what URLs they should live on. So let's now go into the Java directory and we've still got greeter.java, only this time if we look at it, it has changed. Greeter.java is now a servlet, and so I've declared it using this web servlet annotation. So that there's the import, import Java Axe servlet annotation web servlet, and now I've declared that this class Greeter is a web servlet living on the URL uh, slash greet within this web application. And I've overridden the do get method uh, that at override annotation means that the compiler will then give me an error if it turns out that actually this doesn't override something in a, in a superclass. So that's a kind of a, a way of making the, the compiler verify that I, I haven't misspelt that name, I haven't accidentally said do gets, in which case it wouldn't be overriding, it would just be declaring another method. Um, but we've overridden the do get method so that uh, we're going to do uh, do this method whenever we receive a get request to the slash greet URL. And the content of it, first thing we do is name is request.get parameter of name. So from the query string at the end of the URL, we're going to get the parameter name. And if it's not specified, if that is coming back null, we're just going to assume the name is world. And in the response from our servlet, well, first of all, we're just always going to set the HTTP response to 200, which is OK. We're going to set the content type to text plain. So this is how we tell the browser or whatever is making the request, this data that we're sending back is just some text. And we are going to write out greeting of name. And our greeting of name is hello, followed by the name. So if we... Uh, send our request with no name specified, it should say hello world. And if we send it with a name specified, it should say hello, followed by that name. So that's our very simple servlet that we've just declared. If we go back up to our uh, web project directory, and if we then go into source test Java, we'll see that greeter test is still there and greeter test has not changed. So greeter test is still testing that uh, the greeting for world uh, is hello world. And so if I go up here, I should still be able to do Gradle test, which will compile my code and run that um, unit test and check that it is indeed hello world. And sure enough, one test completed and the test was successful. And once again, I could go and have a look, oops, sorry, inside uh, webproj, inside build, reports, tests, index.html, and there it is. There's my test having been run successfully, 100% successful. Let's go back to uh, the command line. And uh, it is also possible to run tests that will actually run a server and make HTTP requests into it, but that's a little bit more complicated to do. I'm not going to put that into this video. Uh, the next target I want to show you though is Gradle app run. And so this is the one from the plugin that was downloaded from GitHub. And this is going to compile the servlet, well, except that it's already compiled, but it's going to package it uh, into a WAR through the, the, the uh, web plugin. But in this case, it's actually going to run it in place, but it's going to run it inside the Jetty container. And so I'm going to be able to actually run a server hosting my servlet. 
when you run this for the first time, uh, you will probably find that Gradle will want to download quite a few different dependencies. Um, in this case, I've already downloaded them and I've already resolved them, so it's fairly quick for me. And uh, the result here runs at the address localhost 8080 webproj. And so let's copy that URL. Let's paste it into the web browser. And initially, that's just going to, by default, list a directory because I haven't specified anything to go on the uh, the root URL for this uh, web application, webproj. Uh, and so it's just listing the directory, and it's got a web inf in it. Uh, but I declared a servlet that was at greet. So let's go and see if that greets me. And I didn't specify a name, so it's saying hello world. Uh, let's now go and say greet name equals William. Hello, William. So there I've now had Gradle compile a servlet and I've had it also run it in Jetty for me.